And welcome to Excel Live. Nipeto Subulele Charlie, Mr. Weekend, Echot Maneba Lekle. And today we have an amazing and jam packed show for Nina, whereby we'll be basically talking about cyber security awareness. And we do have a guest here, Tenam Shanji, who will be basically answering on how do we keep our personal data safe. And then later on, we do have a challenge when it comes to the presenters to see if Bebe Melena during the show. And again, last but not least, we do have a local rapper who goes by the name J Milan S.A who's going to give us another performance and also before he gets to release his music he's going to give us some exclusive Nyana. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to Destination Awesomeness. Destination Awesomeness indeed. Ladies and gents, that was Osibo and I of course go by Nebulwandile in Tombia Gazulu, better known as the Princess of Presenting and I'm also one of the co-captains who's going to be making sure that you're entertained all the way till 6.30. Umichali is also in the building, but I'll let her introduce herself a little later on. Now today, as Uu Sibu has said, we're talking all things cyber security. Technology helps us to simplify our lives and provides us with the convenience that we need to, you know, make everyday tasks very easy. But it also makes us very vulnerable to scams and digital attacks. Now today, we all care about how you're feeling. We all care about your safety on the internet. So we brought on a specialist in the building. He goes by the name of Craig Peterson, and he is a digital digital forensic practitioner as well as a fraud and cybercrime investigator. Yo guys, that was a bit of a mouthful. And he's going to be talking to us today about cyber security. So before I move on any further, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Craig Peterson in the building. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me here. I really love being in the studio. I'm looking forward to today's discussion. I'm looking forward to it as well because I, well, I know for sure that I'm a social media girl through and through. I'm a technology no, girl I'm through shocked. and through. Are you amazed in the I'm 21st amazed. century? <laughs> I want to find out if someone doesn't know what cyber security is. Because for example, myself, I will think cyber security is like when people break in and then the country is at mm -hmm. risk and there's so many things that are going wrong, the secrets are out, etc. But what does it mean for a regular person like myself? You know, 10 years ago, we were talking about that. Cyber security was something that belonged in the corporate space mm -hmm. and in businesses. It wasn't a worry to me and you. Yeah. But these days, everybody's got a smartphone. Mm. Everybody's got a tablet, a laptop. We're using our cloud accounts to store our schoolwork, our university. We've got Instagram influencers that mm. are building up and monetizing a following. Yeah. And that, as much as it adds great convenience to our life, mm. it comes with a risk because yeah. as much as you got it, the people are going to want to steal it from you yeah. and monetize that. Yeah. And that's where cyber security as a whole becomes a really important consideration to the average person out there with a couple of digital devices. Yeah, and then how do I make sure that I protect myself? For example, I've got literally everything you mentioned. I've got, I've got a banking app, I've got Instagram, yeah. I've got payments online, I've got so many of these things. How do I make sure that I stay protected and my personal information remains just my personal information and no one can attack and take it away? Good question, mm. easy answer. Pencil, paper, yeah. no electronics. Oh no, Problem that's solved. not a good answer. <laughs> How do we do that for But real? that's really, really what it comes down to. It's yeah. a balance. It's mm. a balance between safety and security mm -hmm. and convenience and finding the midpoint that's gonna work. Yeah. Because really old school letters and a pen and pencil is not gonna cut it not anymore. But neither is having people stealing your personal data, intruding in your life, or stealing your money. Mm. So you've got to find that meeting point in the middle yeah. where there's a bit of sensibility and accountability to mm. it. So there's a couple of golden rules. For those that do follow the path of being social media influencers, for yeah. example, that's monetized. Yeah. The moment you monetize it, you've got to pay attention. Right. And I know this is going to be heartbreaking, but Gmail is not your friend. Okay. That it's is just not. If you don't have things like Gmail, which is great and convenient and free, yeah. but if it's not set up with the right levels of security, like two-factor authentication, mm -hmm. proper fallback passwords and 
access to it. Yeah. The chance of someone stealing that from you are really good. Yeah. And who are you going to phone? Yeah. It's not that you're paying for the service, mm. much like Facebook, Instagram. All of these services are great. We're so used to the fact that they're there and they're free. Mm. But when it doesn't work or where there's a problem or someone's hijacked it, yeah. there's nobody to call. There's no big call center. Yeah. And you could end up losing that, that following that you built. I mean, imagine waking up tomorrow morning and all your Instagram followers are gone. I would actually cry. Real tears. It's an emotional thing for me. <laughs> no, for real. Especially because we've started monetizing it and not just yep. monetizing it, but brands are asking us to do promotions, etc. So it's becoming a job, not just the fact that I'm doing it for fun. Absolutely. It's yeah. not just the monetization, it's a brand. Yeah. And a, these days, what's referred to as a personal brand, where mm. a personal brand does have a value attached yeah. to it. Um, even the most junior of influencers have got good followings. Yes, and, and, and sorry, just to jump in there, I wanted to find out about junior influencers. I mean, we have kids at, from the age of six who have cellular phones right now. So how, as parents, can you make sure that your kids <coughs> are restricted to what they are seeing online? Because you don't know what your kids are doing on Instagram. Maybe they're watching videos on YouTube, and then they bump into things that might not let them sleep at night. So how do I, as a parent, make sure that my kid is safe, especially if they have a cellular device? You're not going to like the answer. It's not a popular one. Don't give them one. a phone. <laughs> um, and it's going to give my age away. Yeah. But the answer is that up until the age of 15, 16, mm. kids should not be having social media at all. Yeah. Let kids be kids. Mm. The world at 140 characters is a pretty nasty place to be. Mm. And it can open avenues of cyberbullying and all sorts of things that kids really don't need to be exposed to. Yeah. They'll get to the technology in time. Mm. But as a parent, we also want our kids to embrace technology and to get yeah. used to it as quick as possible. Yeah. The midpoint to that is an old proverb, trust but verify. Yeah. From the time your kids get devices, they need to understand that as a parent, there's a limit to the privacy that they have. You mm. are going to be able to and need to check those devices to lock down what apps they can and cannot have mm. to decide should they or should they not be on platforms like TikTok, yeah. which is really contentious at the moment. Mm. Um, because and the TikTok dances are contagious, so I understand why kids would want to be there, but I mean, I'm assuming maybe parents could be in charge of their accounts and then they just like, like yeah. view what they're doing. I don't know yeah. if that would make sense. Yep. So the parent can actually set up the account so that they can log in from laptop or computer. Yeah. The child can still use it on a mobile device mm. and the parent can kind of moderate the content, if you will, mm. because there are so many paths for all sorts of creeps lurking out there yeah. to approach your kid. Mm. And you don't want that. Yeah. We, we need to let our kids grow, yeah. but we have to protect them. Yeah. So setting up your kids' accounts, having the passwords to their accounts, is really important yeah and you, not just leaving them to be kids and being like okay no they're not doing anything dangerous but watching making sure that you're always alert and i love yeah. that and speaking of being alert always one thing that i am very guilty of is if i go somewhere maybe my daughter's running low and i see an open wi-fi i'm like i'm gonna enter on yep. that mm, i'm gonna use their data mm -hmm. is that dangerous oh yes okay. um that's not something you want to gonna you want to do um yeah. Using Wi-Fi mm -hmm. is kind of like using public bathrooms. Oh. You want to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Okay. They're not all that cracked up to be. Yeah. Um, connecting to private uh, to, to a public Wi-Fi in your local restaurant or cafe that's great and it's convenient. Yeah. But that convenience can come at a cost. And the data you're transmitting, like your bank account logins. Yeah. Rule number one of Wi-Fi, don't ever log on if it's asking you for your Gmail, Facebook, or your other credentials. Yeah. It could be a phishing attempt. All right, Craig, thank you so much. I've had a really, really good conversation with you. Unfortunately, it has come to an end. But right now, I want to find out, if anyone wants to maybe find out more about where they can get a hold of you, where can we find you to ask you more questions about, let's say, uh, cybersecurity? Absolutely, uh, more than happy. Uh, you can look up TCG Digital Forensics on Facebook yes. and the normal social media sort of platforms, except for TikTok. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and of course, LinkedIn is the easiest way to get in touch. Pop us a question, we'll be happy to help if we can.